Game day at the St. Pete Times Forum begins at the crack of dawn. And on this edition of Inside the Lightning, you have an all-access pass to everything and everyone involved in a Tampa Bay Lightning home game. It's fun being around the guys. It's not like a, you know, we don't have to punch a clock or anything like that. It's a good uh, 12, 15 hour day. Oh, I love it. You'll be introduced to the unsung heroes of the organization and the facility who ensure fans attending the game the very best experience. We make sure tonight we get the wings tossed early and get them separated into the boxes. We take you onto the ice as you hop on and go for a ride with the Zamboni drivers. I just look at it as I enjoy the job. I love the game and that's why I do it. And you'll get to sit in the director's chair and help lead the productions that take place inside the forum and on our own Sun Sports telecast. I'm kind of the, you know, the conductor and everybody else plays an instrument. I kind of call it like a mini air traffic controller because you, you're just basically Five, telling everybody four, what, what's next. Three, two, All that and much one. more. Your VIP okay. pass awaits. Inside the Lightning. Game day. All access next. The Tampa Bay Lightning hit the ice for their ritual morning skate prior to their showdown against the Carolina Hurricanes. Welcome to the St. Pete Times Forum and to Inside the Lightning, I'm Paul Kennedy, and you are in for a special treat. Over the next half hour, we're going to take you in and around everything that goes on here inside the Forum on game day. And while the bolts are on the ice at 10.15 in the morning, many others in this organization start their day much earlier. We get here between 7 and 7.30 on a, on a game day, usually. The locker room's usually set up the day before, um, unless we get in late from, from a game, you know, on the road or something. Coffee's on, you know, if somebody asks for last minute things, we're, we're able to do that because we have time in the morning to do it. I usually get home about 12.30, 1 o'clock, midnight. <laughs> Even though the hours are long, um, it's fun coming into work every day. It's fun being around the guys. It's not like a, you know, we don't have to punch a clock or anything like that. So the locker room is set and prepared for the players' arrival. It's not just Ray and his staff that make their way to the arena bright and early on game day. Here by 8 o'clock in the morning, start with a perimeter walk. I walk all levels, make sure everything is set up the way it needs to be set up per the events coordinator setup sheet. We're in a hockey set, uh, basically all inner cowls pushed out with seating, all uh, wedges turned with seating. Tells you what's sold, what's not sold, party wise. Mike to Cody. Mike, I'm on the south end. 10 4 north end, uh, section 112. Row B, seats number five and six are loose. I also make sure the exam tunnels are clear. I make sure the uh, locker room areas are clear. As players, coaches, and others begin to arrive in the forum parking lot, the approaching long day also starts for a very important member of our own Sun Sports Broadcasting crew. I'm linking the production truck to the house for television. Each position that we have a camera or audio situation comes from the building to this I.O. panel and it's hooked into the truck which then transmits it out over satellite to the home viewers can see this show. The clock hits 10.15 and the team heads from the locker room to the ice as the Zamboni drivers finish their final run before practice. More members of the television crew arrive as Mike Power's staff readies the bowl of the forum for the game later that evening. As we continue on Inside the Lightning, 
Practice is over and the players head home for an afternoon of rest before the game. But as morning turns into afternoon, there's no time for rest for the St. Pete Times Forum staff. You need a skate cut from practices. You figure on game day you have two teams skating. Um, and you will get some running, especially if they do laps around the net. And as game time approaches, the activity increases both inside and outside the arena. Controlled chaos is a great way to put it. If you're just walking in and you don't know what's going on, it's going to seem just crazy. Practice is over and the players gather in the lunchroom for a bite to eat. And after taking time to sign autographs, they head home for some rest for their game that night against Carolina. Welcome back to Inside the Lightning Game Day All Access. I'm Paul Kennedy. The St. Pete Times Forum is relatively quiet from the sound of skates slicing across the ice or sticks slapping against pucks, but we do hear the sound of the Zamboni laying down a fresh sheet of ice as activity increases in game time nears. Put a new blade on this. Uh, it started to, to go bad. It's been on four games. Normally, this isn't something we do on a game day, uh, but it is something that has to be done right now. So, as Tom and fellow Zamboni driver and conversion tech John Pravlik install the new blade, a hockey camp for youth players is taking place back on the Forum Ice. Today on a game day is a little hectic because uh, we want injured players that want to skate, the teams want to skate. We're on the ice with uh, squirts and peewees from 1 o'clock in the afternoon all the way to, I think, 4.30, quarter to 5. Blades on, we got to put some water in it, other than that, we're ready to go for the game. Um, we got to start getting set up everything, all of our ice crew stuff, our mats, our crash carts, our glass, all of our tools that we need, the scrapers, the squeegees, the shovels, get everything ready for, uh, for the game time, pretty much. I'll show you Smaby's numbers from the last couple games. Okay. I think it's two he's been up and played. Okay. And Mahalik played in Washington. Two goals and five shots. The early afternoon also finds the Sun Sports production team gathering the information taken from the morning skate and beginning to lay the groundwork for the game telecast that night. We're in the press conference with Rick Tockett to see who's in the lineup, who's out of the lineup. Then go across the hall, get to talk to the other team, talk to their coach, see if anything's happened there. Then we head back into the truck and finalize our plans and dump the sound bites into the system and put them all together and we're off and running. I get in the truck and I start right away on my format. Uh, I pass out um, about 10, 10 formats to people on the crew and make sure everybody knows what we're doing from the um, beginning of the open all the way through the end of the third period into the overtime. Anything that we might be doing for features in the intermission. On a normal day, you know, crew calls around 1 o'clock. Everybody shows up on the crew from camera people um, to people that work in the truck and camera guys get all their equipment out of the bottom of the truck. Um, they put them on dollies and they wheel them up to their positions. It takes a while to fax everything out, make sure everything's plugged into the right location in the truck, and uh, make sure all of that happens. So uh, there's a couple of hours in between getting here on location and then building, faxing, before uh, everything's powered up, ready to go. We are in the catacombs of the forum here, underneath the stands. We have plenty of brick and mortar. Actually, people are sitting right on top of my head underneath there. And we run robotics, which are over, over the net on one end and inside the net on the other end. It's just a process. Uh, you take your time, and you do it right, and you have time six hours before the game to set up. So if things go wrong, you take your time, you find out, and you fix it. That's why we're here. But it's, it's, just, it's just fun. No matter how you look at it, it's a blast. Inside the Arena Bowl, both the forum and broadcast crews continue their duties. 
But up on the fourth and fifth floors, another important ingredient of any lightning game day begins to kick it up a notch, so to speak. Right now, we're beginning to fire a lot of our hot food for the club tonight and some of our other little party areas. We're finishing up some of the cold trays behind us. About 3 o'clock in the afternoons, um, typically different party areas start picking up some of their dry food or some of their cold food so they can start staging it and moving it around. This kitchen produces food for about eight different areas spread out over four floors. We make sure tonight we get the wings tossed early and get them separated into the boxes. All right, cool. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm making succotash. <laughs> This is going to serve 600 people. The two most common staple items that go out to almost all of our party areas every game are hot wings and meatballs. And tonight we'll go through 600 pounds of chicken wings and probably 500 pounds of meatballs. Still to come, final preparations are made before the doors open and the puck drops. This, it's definitely a science getting the, the proper water flow um, away from the food. And the countdown is on before the show hits the big screen inside the arena and the viewers at home. When you get to the anthem, you can breathe a little bit. But then you're still worried about is the Let's Play Hockey Kids and plays. All that and some post-game ice sculpting of its own as we skate along on Inside the Lightning. Game day, all access. It's now close to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and game time is only three and a half hours away. For one important member of the organization, it's the culmination of hours and days of preparation that's done for every single game and event. My responsibilities at this time are to check all the locker room areas, performer rooms, and all of our party and meeting room areas to make sure they're set up appropriately. I put together the setup sheet, which conversion my power staff goes off this conversion seat to set the entire event. I have to contact every department in the organization from housekeeping, sports service, conversion, audiovisual, electrical. As you can see walking through the locker room corridor, uh, we do have a hockey school camp going on right now and once this event is over, I will be contacting housekeeping and conversion to make sure that all the rooms are converted back over to the hockey game and are clean for the player's arrival. I'm stocking the bathrooms. We do that every day before a game, all concert. My task is to come in, make sure everything is fine. To my satisfaction that the customers and guests will be satisfied. They call me Miss 100 Level sometimes, because this is the 100 Level. And I, I'm real picky about it, very picky. Because this is what this is the floor everyone comes on before they go anywhere else. They always stop here first. This is Connie, I'm known as the 100 Level Lady. Keep my bathrooms clean. All right, you guys, how's everyone doing? Great. Everyone good? A few things to go over this evening, guys. Um, regular stuff, all the party areas are open. Of course, all uh, your supervisors will go over with uh, that with you. Regular stuff, as always, guys. Make sure we watch step, hold the handrails. I know a couple of the secret shopper reports again lately. That looks good. Looks like everyone's uh, jumping on that bandwagon. Um, and let's, let's, you know, let's treat everyone the way that we want to be treated. Back on the fifth floor of the Forum, the Lightning's uh, event so production and entertainment staff meet to discuss their own responsibilities that evening. Everything from the video scoreboard that hangs above center ice to what transpires during television commercial breaks and period intermissions is determined prior to the opening of the doors for the fans. Down there. So you don't have to take your camera from 218. For the pregame stuff, we don't have our camera one Rob center ice camera tonight. So we have uh, one camera in 310, one in 322. I'm going to try to keep some heat in the ice so we can try to keep a good quality for tonight's game. We let it get too cold. We let it get too cold and it get too brittle and too snowy. So uh, we're going to try to keep some heat in it. And uh, just basically it's a maintenance that we do uh, throughout game day. Everybody wants to drive a Zamboni, you know, everybody. I'm proud 
of the team. I'm proud of the fact of what I do. I just look at it as I enjoy the job. I love the game, and that's why I do it. Vendors, guest services, and Mike Power staff are making final preparations throughout the building and down on the ice. And out on the plaza, there's plenty of entertainment taking place prior to the opening of the St. Pete Times Forum doors. Game time approaches, and all the day's work is built to this moment. Yep. Oh, shoot. Hope we're going to have to do your jazz quick. OK, let's go, let's go, let's go. Big energy. This is going to be a quick one, so watch for me. Quick launch, guys. And once the final horn sounds, the frenetic pace doesn't stop there for the lightning stand. And then while they're rolling up all this stuff, we're just going to cut the logo down and work on that. And then while when they come out, start taking out the glass and get the doors off and get the dasher out. Are we just going to are we just going to chip chip it over? I'm in here by myself uh, every day. Uh, about two hours before the event, we'll start setting them up. And uh, we use a technique with a sleeping bag we put over the top of them, which will give it another hour or so of, uh, of life. We're building a, a two-level seafood display. Putting the risers down, we're going to put our first level up now. You don't want this dripping down onto the table. There's holes in here to let the water go through so that when they put the seafood in the pans, they're not submerged in water. This all drips under the table into a bucket. This, it's definitely a science getting the, the proper water flow um, away from the food, and it's a lot of trial and error involved. Hope to John, I have the video camera in 54. Would you like me to get it to you somehow? So we need Let's Play Hockey and Zam Kits tonight. We haven't needed those in a while, so make sure it happens. He's not on a channel. He's on a radio like me, a headset just with John. He's never going to be able to hear me saying No. Several Lightning players kicked the soccer ball around prior to the drop of the puck, while the hard day's work of the organization's entire staff prepares for the countdown to game time. Time on music, Sean. Uh, 37, 36, 35, 34. I'm kind of the, you know, the conductor and everybody else plays an instrument. That's kind of how it, it works together. We make music, at least we hope we do. Uh, John was asking for the name for Let's Play Hockey. Yep. Nicholas. Uh, You'll have to correct that. It's Nicholas Savalitas. Savalitas? Something along those lines, yeah. 10, 4, thank you. George and Paul Porter. Uh, 34, yeah. Craig. Let's play hockey is Nicholas. Stand by three. A little hot, Sean. Okay. And up to three. Nicholas Sab Savalitas. I spell the last name. The Tampa Bay Lightning welcome in the Carolina Hurricanes and Eric Stahl leading the way with 18 goals. Third matchup of the season between the Bolts and the Canes coming to you live from the St. Pete so Times we'll Forum. We'll with right oh, here we got him, we got him, we got him. Fast forward, fast forward to Lightning Live. Coming off the I'm Todd Callis filling in for Paul yes, Kennedy like alongside stairs. Chris Stigman. We'll have more on tonight's Coming game in just a minute. Right go, now, Todd. let's go down. 30 seconds, Chief. Five, four, <laughs> three. Good laughs, good laughs. OK, roll Smokey. Roll Smokey, track your crossfire three. Go, go, go. Hand on the anthem. Crazy? Yeah, go ahead, Rick. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, stats and standings, here we go. Stats and standings are up. You got five and a half minutes. Get with you before JC, I can you put probably leave about four. Can you program and router about eight and, uh, four. number four, please? Yes. Keep counting, just keep counting us down, Mark. Ready, Sean? Go, Sean. Paul Porter.
overtime game. Here's St. Louis cutting and shooting. And it's just over Ward's shoulder. It ends up with Prospel. Take the cops out of the box. Okay. He's hooked. Got it on goal. Scores. 42 take two. I'll use red for sure, Bear. 46 take six. Can't, you kind of pulled out on yellow. 43 take three. And Craig really has been it. waiting a long time for 42. that one. 42 take two. 34. Okay, I'm going to go red. His last goal and then, was November uh, 10th of 2007. And then orange and George, can you give me celebration? He's been back it up a little bit, Barrett. Back it up a little more. The game ends, and equipment manager Ray Phil and his staff quickly load up the gear. Tampa Bay will be leaving that night for a game the next day in Atlanta against the Thrashers. And the Sun Sports television crew concludes their post-game show and begins to pack up all the cameras and load their equipment back into the production truck. And for Mike Power and the conversion crew, their day is far from done. What we're doing tonight is we're taking the ice out. Uh, last game before the circus, we're going to break the bond. What that means is you have a concrete surface and the ice is bonded to that concrete. We heat the floor up, jack the temperatures up a little bit, and basically that, that sheet will float because there'll be a water, water created underneath. We bring chippers out, we'll chip all the way around the outer edge. Breaks it away from the dashers. This is something new. So I'm just trying to get some heat into it. Hopefully it'll break the bond and soften this up. Um, we're interested really to see how these come out. So it should be a first there, so. Then we'll bring the bulldozers in, and you'll see the ice just peel away, like in layers. And it'll just, it'll just crumble. Basically, you're going to see a concrete floor when you come back in the morning, about eight, eight hours to convert over, uh, until about 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Game day for the Tampa Bay Lightning requires such a tremendous amount of effort on behalf of so many people. We hope over the past half hour you've enjoyed this behind-the-scenes access to the St. Pete Times Forum. And the next time you either watch a telecast or attend a game here in person, I think you'll have an expanded appreciation of what is required to stage a game in the National Hockey League. And now for everyone connected with the show, I'm Paul Kennedy. Thanks for watching Inside the Lightning, game day, all access.